Hello friends, my name is Mahima Mishra and I am a teacher educator for English pedagogy. This is unit 4 and we are going to discuss listening and speaking skills. There are certain tools that help us to teach listening and speaking skills. But before we begin, I would like to elaborate that teach word cannot be used for listening and speaking. I think training is a better word because listening and speaking skills are generally inherent in children. We can only polish them better. So let's start with all the tools that can be used for enhancing the listening and speaking skills of children. Group discussions, paired activities, debate, elocution, extempore speech. These are some tools which can be used to polish the speaking skills of children. What are the benefits of group discussions? Various lessons can be taught through group discussions in class which help in giving the child an opportunity to voice his or her opinion. In group discussions, we give an opportunity, we give a situation to the child where he can talk about what he likes or what he thinks. His opinion is what matters in group discussions. It also makes children learn to respect each other's views. So mutual respect gets imbibed in children when they have an opportunity of having group discussions. The children become acquainted with more than their own limited experience or knowledge. During group discussions, they listen to each other, they learn from each other. They may not have all knowledge or they may not have all kinds of experience in life. So when they listen to each other, they get to know a lot more than what they already know. And this, I think, uh, applies to all of us. Where can we use group discussions? After completing a prose chapter, we can have a group discussion about the characters and their actions. This helps in analyzing the characters and it also helps in analyzing the situations that the characters are in. This helps in building up the child's logical thinking ability. The child knows what to infer from what kind of actions. Suppose we have taught the chapter The Tree Goddess by Ruskin Bond. The storyline is that there is a king who wants a tree to make to make a magnificent palace for himself and he doesn't want to go to a lot of expense to do that. So he decides to make it with wood. So for making it with, with wood, he needs a big tree. His king's men go and look for a tree and they decide upon a fine, tall Diodar tree which needs to be cut down for making the palace. This tree is an abode to a goddess. The goddess decides to visit the king. She comes in his dream and tries to convince him why she shouldn't be cut down. She also convinces him about if she has to be cut, she should be cut in three parts. Seeing the sacrificing nature of the tree, the king gets really moved. He changes his decision of cutting the tree. Once we do that chapter, we can discuss the characters of the tree, of the tree goddess, of the king and all the king's men. We can also discuss the actions of the characters involved. This helps in making the children analyze things better. They can understand people and their actions better. We can also use group discussions when we do a poem. After completing a poem, we can have a group discussion about the message or theme of the poem. All poems generally carry a central theme. Any theme can be used and can be used for having a group discussion in class. The children just need to be segregated in teams or groups and they need to be given the poem. They can analyze and conclude which theme goes best with the poem that has been chosen. It is there in inference. At times, it can be different from what the teacher thinks, but we should give them that leeway. We should give them that right to come up with their own inference. This kind of an activity is good for classes 3 and above. We can also have a general discussion on a debatable topic to improve their reasoning and logic. For example, should homework be given in schools? Or are exams important? When you give topics like that to children, they really get motivated to think on those lines because that will also benefit them. There would be some who would come up with logics like, if we get homework, we don't have time for playing at home. They will come up with logics like, if we get too much homework, we can't study for the coming tests. So, all logics 
all reasoning is accepted they are allowed to give whatever they think is correct paired activities paired activities can also be done when the class is noisy if we break them up in big groups they will make more noise so we need to break them up in smaller groups that is two each so when the when, when we pair them up they tend to make lesser noise because they have to come and present the whole thing in front of the whole class this can be done by giving them smaller tasks Paired activities also prove beneficial when there is too much preparation involved. Coordinating with one person becomes easier than coordinating with a whole group of children. So, when we have examples, when we have activities where facts or material need to be got from home, we can have paired activities because then one child can bring the uh, materials, one child can look for the facts and the other can just compile them. What is elocution? the art of careful public speaking using clear pronunciation and good breathing to control the voice the cambridge dictionary has that definition for elocution so as we can see it is an art like all arts it cannot be created it has to be there but we can polish it we can train the child to have that art it is the art of careful public speaking the child needs to know that he's on stage and he has to be comfortable there it's public speaking so it has to be a forum where he cannot make mistakes where he should not make mistakes and he should feel free to be able to uh, deliver the speech or to convey his message the pronunciation should be very clear because the, the child should not be misunderstood the breathing should be good which means you should know where to take a big pause and where to leave it the voice should be controlled we should know when to be soft when to be loud elocution is generally done for poems from renowned poets the child can recite his or her own poem too the learner gets confidence and stage presence through the exposure every child who has got an opportunity in his life to be on stage gets a kind of confidence which is not found anywhere else articulation pronunciation and vocabulary get expanded when a child performs on stage his pronunciation his articulation of the language is paid attention to and he gets a lot of exposure which helps him in his later life his vocabulary also gets expanded he learns new words like we did in so many other poems where the child gets to learn new words through the new poems that he learns the comfort level in the language is achieved when a child speaks continuously or fluently that is generally done when he has learnt up something so that gives him a lot of comfort it, it gives him a lot of confidence in that language so that is also achieved through elocution it helps boost his memory so a child learns better remembers better when he elocutes tips for good elocution the volume when we say volume it does not mean that the child has to be very loud all the time volume should be in control of the child when we are teaching elocution we we must teach the child that volume should be in control we should know when to be loud when to be soft there should be clarity of speech the child should be able to pronounce the words correctly because he is speaking on a public podium and there are people listening to him if they don't understand what he is speaking or if they don't understand what he is trying to convey nobody will be able to pay attention then the pronunciation should be in place the pronunciation needs to be correct because there are various words which can be pronounced differently we we still mispronounce certain words because we had just read them in books we have not been taught how to speak them so that kind of a thing should not happen with the child for example a word like data there are people who will say data there are people who will say status but the pronunciation is status so we need to teach that to the child expression should be correct if it is a sad poem the child need not smile or smirk if it is a happy poem the child need not look lonely or morose he should look nice happy use of voice only this is a very very important point for good elocution when we have elocution competitions or whenever we have a kind of a elocution in class we must make sure that the child who uses only his voice properly to be able to conduct himself on stage 
should be getting better uh, grades or marks than the child who uses props or too many gestures because elocution is all about the voice modulation. Then we come to extempore speech. Extempore means done or said without any preparation or thought. So the most important words here are preparation and thought. We are not supposed to think about what we are speaking and we are not supposed to be prepared about what we are going to say when we have an extempore speech. So generally the child needs to speak for two to three minutes on a given topic which is disclosed to him or her on the spot. The child gets to speak the topic on the spot. We are not supposed to tell the child beforehand what he is going to speak. Some tips for organizing an extempore speech activity in class. The most important thing is to choose age appropriate topics. We cannot expect a class one child to speak about something which is beyond his comprehension. We cannot expect a class two child to speak something which is something that he has never heard of. So we should know that the topic that has been given to him is age appropriate. Then inform the children about the activity a few days in advance so that they can be mentally prepared. Now here it doesn't mean that we have to give the topics in advance. We have to tell them about the coming activity in advance. They can practice in front of the mirror, they can practice in front of their parents or tutors and they can be mentally prepared to be able to come and present themselves for two to three minutes on stage on any given topic. They can also read a lot because current topics can also be one of the topics for extempore. We must discuss the rubrics at length and show them what is expected either through modeling it yourself or through other audiovisual techniques. So the child should know what we are expecting from him. We should speak for two to three minutes on a given topic in front of them and if we are not very confident, we can show them audiovisuals which are very easily available through YouTube and other means. Do not assess them for content initially but for their fluency and confidence. So when we are teaching a child extempore speech, we are not judging them for the content because they might not be aware of the topic that we have just given them. What we have to assess them for is their fluency and their confidence on stage. We can also have regular jam sessions in class which is a just a minute activity which can be done any time we have a few minutes in class. If we have just taught the lesson and we have a few minutes left, we can give a jam activity in class which helps them think on their feet which helps them come up with uh, points, which helps them come up with uh, matter without thinking much and speaking fluently and confidently in class. Then expression, emphatic gestures, eye contact, natural demeanor, etc. are qualities required. Expression, if the child is speaking on a topic that he is really passionate about, he should look that passionate. Then emphatic gestures, if it is a debatable topic or something that he really feels strongly about, he should know how to gesticulate for that. Then eye contact is important because that shows confidence of the child and a natural demeanor. Which means you should look comfortable while you are speaking. These are the qualities required for any extempore speech. What is the importance of such activities in class? It makes you excel in other classes. If a child is confident, if a child is open to coming and expressing himself on uh, demand, then the child feels like talking on every subject and then the teacher doesn't have to probe him much. He will come up with answers, he will do well, he will want to give so many answers. So that will automatically help him come up with a better personality. Improves your listening skills. When we have such activities in class, they listen to each other, they, they listen to audio visuals, and they get a lot of exposure to listening to other people and listening to renowned poets and speakers. It helps you influence others. People uh, find it very nice when other people listen to them and they get influenced by them. So to become influential, to become confident enough so that people are listening to you, you need to be a good speaker. It boosts your confidence. If a person is a good speaker, they become more confident. It helps you network. Network means to make friends. If a person knows how to speak well, they know how to listen well, then they are able to make better friends. They are able to make more friends than the others. It also grooms you for your profession. 
nowadays the kind of uh, jobs that children get the nowadays the kind of professions that are opening up all of them require a child to be able to present in front of the employers a lot of presentations or do a lot of talking so unless the child is confident and you know uh, easy in his persona he will not be able to give that kind of a presentation it also teaches you how to argue so the child learns to logically prove himself arguing is not a bad quality arguing is something where you know how to prove your point so the child learns to do that i hope the tips and the points discussed here will be of help in your teaching in the classroom thank you so much we'll meet again thank you